Welcome back. Let's let some people get in here and get into this. It's been almost a week, I think, since a live stream. Exciting times in the crypto space. Saw Richard had a uh, live stream today. A lot of people are having live streams. All time highs will bring out everybody. Even you. Even me. <laughs> well, I mean, Bitcoin's on its high right now. I mean, for sure, and it's 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 on fire, and it's, there's no stopping it. Now it's a matter of when's that weight gonna pull up the alts. I know a lot of people that are. I'd like to call Bit Bitcoin maximalist, which God love them. But the space is pretty big, and there's a lot of uh, innovation coming with it. So I know a lot of people are freaking out. They're not seeing their alts kind of follow that wake. But we've seen this a few times now. Bitcoin takes that big lift, and then you'll see this firestorm right underneath all the alts. That's what always happens. People are going to speculate that. At, at a minimum set, they're going to come in and speculate it. They're going to let it keep settling down, keep settling down, and then bam, you're going to miss it out because you're going to sell. Hold. 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 See some folks, do you sell some rigs? Eh, every once in a while. Most of the time we use our rigs. We try to educate you guys into if you guys are going to if you guys are going to enter this space and build your own rig or enter the space in general and buy some crypto coins in general of how to do that. Um, and you know, and how to maintain because rigs are mining rigs are not the easiest thing in the world. It's a, it's not just a technical thing. It's kind of like a, it's like having a small kid. You got to watch it all the time. And anytime you take your eye off on it, sometimes it goes a little crazy on you. But we'll let a few more people get in here, and then we're gonna get into these mining cards. I want to try to make this a very straight and to the point episode. Um, we're trying to, we've been doing a lot of content building around here the last few weeks. We're trying to get a lot of stuff updated right now. We're going to be releasing a few things out. We have a video almost done in post production. Um, I'm going through it and just making sure it looks good. It's kind of getting into that education kind of series where we're trying to be very tactical, keep them less than 10 minutes, probably around seven minutes. The next one that's coming out is the cradle to grave on how to mod the BIOS on, on, AMD graphics cards. We're trying to do, we try to take out all the all the stops and just go start to finish. Very dedicated, very precise on the actual stuff that we're using and why. And it, it, you know, did a whole post production on audio that should release tomorrow. It was planning today, but I still want to make sure there's a few cuts that I want to make sure that it, it sounds good. And there's a few things sometimes when I when I talk. I say things and you know, I listen to them again and I'm like, oh, I can rephrase that better. So we've done that on a few audio pieces and we're making sure the video is good. That should go out tomorrow. That again is on how to, you know, update a BIOS on an AMD graphics card. That's, a, you know, a short video. So we also have a whole bunch of what I'm calling a little shorts, which are 60 second to a minute and a half of very distinct things when it comes to the mining space. Um, how to properly set up a, you know, hook up a riser, or all the different components of that. It's a very elementary stuff when it comes into the mining scene um, that anybody that's been in it for a while has just learned through, I call it kind of blood, sweat, and tears of trying to figure out why your mining rig's acting wonky. Um, we've taken a lot of the suggestions out of the Discord and we're turning that into content that is bite size and the idea is to have a section on the website that that stuff can be accessed from. Um, not just for you can sit there and troll through the our current uh, YouTube page and try to find it. We're, we're trying to link it to that particular content. So we're, we built the page for that. Now it's a matter of building those little videos and doing the audio on those. So that's what we're working on. We have a, a full-time person working that kind of stuff on the website. And you've probably seen a lot of the pictures and stuff being updated on all the old videos. And we're adding in the metadata to that to make sure people can get to it. So that's the kind of shameless plug as people are coming in. Um, we'll see. Uh, I will get to some questions. I do want to just get kind of right into this build now. So right now we're, we have, these are the Sapphire RX 
470 4 gig mining cards. They come in these little brown boxes. There's not much to them. I mean, there, there's literally no label. They do ship, you know, in a little package. They come with some, con, you know, basic driver information. This, the, what's funny about this is the stuff that ships with it isn't actually for these cards. So they give you a little sapphire book and all of the content in that book has something to do with a normal sapphire gpu it actually tells you to plug in a, a hdmi or a dvi there is none of that on these so it's pretty funny that the sapphire just kind of ships that with that i think it's just part of their just normal packaging for gpus and they just went with it on the oem box but essentially you're looking at a standard two fan design no back plate on it and then i mean there's not much else there's no io at all on the front of it none zero nada so standard packaging look i mean these look like the the normal nitros um nothing really special no other kind of indicator on there they do have on the bottom essentially i'll kind of show you guys that with the mini cam let me make sure i have that the screen deck set where you guys can see me switching stuff. Next split. Let's go over to this guy over here and we'll slide that in so you guys can see that kind of, it's probably a little too close. There you go. That's all the text on that. Not much. The second barcode has the actual the actual uh, model number, it's just the Sapphire RX 4 gig GDDR5 uh, mining quad is all it says. doesn't say the memory type or anything like that. It is silicone lottery with these. They come in three different types of memory. They come in Hynix, um, Alpita, and, or, yeah, Alpita and Samsung. That's the only three. This is a random three. We have 20 cards total here. We put six in this rig to kind of get a basic benchmark on six. We'll get through that real quick. And if we if we have some time, I did grab a couple more risers since we're using windows. We can put two more in here, go to eight. If you guys want to see that, we'll just see how the, how the testing and stuff goes. I did plan to go ahead and mod them tonight. I did download a pre couple setup BIOSes um, and we'll go through that. We'll just see, uh, I, I, don't, I actually don't know. I think I have all three BIOSes on here. Um, downloaded, but we'll see which ones we have here. I just literally plugged these in here. I don't know which bio or which memory types are on these cards, but we do have more here too. So if there's a mix of them in here, that's great, and we'll we'll get to test all that tonight. So we're gonna go through. We're gonna test a benchmark on them, and then we'll we'll play with some settings, and then we'll upgrade the BIOS and see what we can get out of it, both from a power standpoint. Did I jack the power up where that's at? Let me see here. Nope, base on that power is 87. You know, I got the other, I'll leave the, I don't know, they're up. Um, on that screen, they're up. On the screen, they're not. Um, we'll, we'll check the power as we're doing it. So we got a baseline of that. This machine's about 90, just sitting here, and we'll get into it. Do you flash BIOS with CMOS? No, I always flash the BIOS in Windows. You can if you use, uh, you, you can, I, I forgot which tool it is. I don't remember if, I don't think it's ATI Flash. It's, there's another tool that you can flash the BIOS with Linux. And I, I just don't do it. It's a lot easier with Windows for us. And I just, we have it all scripted with PowerShell. That video tomorrow shows you guys how to use PowerShell. That's what the video is. It isn't n using the normal process. It is a clear and concise video on how to do six cards at pretty much at the same time and it's just straight into the point using PowerShell so that's the kind of caveat to that video so you can plug in six cards and get it done um, we're gonna come in and see what we got going on here so basic normal let's go to this screen what do we got going on in this machine it's a basic Windows 7 build it's got an i3 7100 in it these are most of our builds you can use G4400 and Celerons the, the, the G I think it's 1950 Celerons, you can quote me on that actual Celeron number. I think it's a 1950. I have to look and see if that's the Celeron we use. But 
Most of the builds, when I'm doing a lot of testing, I put the i3 7100 or the 7150K in there just because I want the speed and I want to get through it. Um, I'm kind of impatient, and those are really fast, single core uh, performance when it's doing a lot of the stuff that it uh, updates and stuff like that. So 7300 in there. We got 8 gigs of memory. I got the specs down below. Uh, 120 gig solid state. Normal mining build setup. Right now, we'll take a look at... These are already kind of set up, so we're using the latest AMD driver, not the blockchain driver. I did download the blockchain driver. We will uh, use that tonight too, but right now we're using the latest uh, minimalist driver. And when I say minimalist, I'm talking about this driver right here, which is the Relive 1710-1 minimal setup driver that's the little 50 meg one not the full 300 meg download so that's the one that's on here right now let's take a look at gpu z get into it mr b with the five dollars kicking it off tonight the five dollar spot everybody's a little happy bitcoin's up sharing the love all right so we got so the first one I'm looking at is Samsung. So we got uh, four, these come in as 470, because that's what they are, 1206 and 1750 on the memory. Let's go with top to bottom. Okay, so the first one on the GPU zero spot is, looks like a PETA. Second one, a PETA. Third, still same. Fourth. Samsung. So there you go. Random set, guys. Silicon Lottery, if you get one. We got a Samsung right there. So that's going to make interesting uh, update for the BIOS. There's another Alpita. And the last one's Alpita. There's another way you can test that. If you go into PowerShell and Windows, run as administrator. And you can do a, uh, let's go into where our ATI wind flash is at. Card mod, ATI wind flash folder. And I have this command already saved in here just to save us time. So it's, you hit the, the period, the backslash, the ATI wind flash.exe. Essentially, it just needs to know where the path is. For that executable and then a space forward uh, dash i and that will do a quick scan on all the cards in there and it'll also tell us kind of if they're the same settings now you can see in this right here this return gpu3 you can see the flash type is different you can see all those other ones have the same thing right there tells you which gpu adapter number if you were going to do a bios upgrade you can see which one you want to target for that Samsung one. That's the MPP20 slash C. That's a quick way to figure out what's going on with your BIOSes and which ones are those. So that and it shows your BIOS part number there. It's got a different part number with the dot, that last extension with the dot M Z M. M is a Mary, N is a Nancy, Z is in zebra. So we're gonna go ahead and close that. We know which one those are, and we're gonna open up. Oh, that's going straight to HODL. Hold on. That's the quick HODL pull. Straight to it and the, straight to the business. Well, we're going to open up that. We're going to open up MISI Afterburner. And we're going to open up GPU-Z and throw the sensors on there for you guys can see that. And we're going to do a baseline test with Ubik, Ethereum, a few of the other coins, and then we'll go through and mod some stuff. So we're running right now 4.4... .4 Seven, beta 17 version of Afterburner. We're going to open up GPU-Z. Get that open. And then I usually go to that with the sensor tab just because I want to watch, I want to watch what some of the, what the cards are doing. So we'll throw that up there. And then we're going to launch the multi-miner. And we're going to hit 33. Started off with Ubik. Ubik hasn't been doing too well, but whole whole all that news. All it takes is a little bit of news, guys. Whenever they get a plat, 
get a smart contract platform out there with somebody running a DAP, and that stuff's going to light up like, like Christmas. We're going long on Ubik. And there's also some other coins coming out. If Richard gets that CFD coin, where you're actually doing proof of effort type of work and being compensated with the token for actual real attainable workload that's being submitted back, that's good stuff. Let's take a look at this. All right, base out of the box, we are at 137 meg hash for six cards. That's 22.5. That's pretty standard on a RX 470. We look like we're right at about 800 watts of power. We'll go lot, big screen on that. So we're holding this whole machine. So that's about 710 watts just from the six cards. And you can see their output right now. The GPU draw out of the box with no, nothing done is right there between 70, 73, 81. It's about 81, 82. Still holding. Have you been watching what Zcash has been doing the last couple days? Thoughts? Uh, I mean, it's it's been going down a little bit. I mean, every, all the, all the alts in general have been taking a little hit right now. There's a lot of consolidation. A lot of people buying up before. The Ledger X. Uh, so Ledger X did an announcement with regards to doing, being able to do, to do future and commodity exchange stuff. They've been, they were approved, which then gives the basic background and lay the, the, the let's let's just say the foundation for EFTs and all that stuff to really get answered. You know, all the be it the Bitcoin EFTs that have been trying, and Richard really touched on this uh, in his video today. I mean, bottom line. Each, of the, each time they, the, somebody tries to attempt to get an EFT, which is where you get real big institutional money into something like Bitcoin or any other asset stuff, each time it's been denied, it's came back with like, hey, here's the reason why, right? So this is answered part of that, that equation. And the sooner you can get easy access to buying Bitcoin than going through the, the pain that it is going through uh, Coinbase, anybody that's ever had to do that and get your... Your money sent to your bank and go through all that kind of that you know know your customer activity um, and seeing how big of a pain that butt that is when you can go into your 401k and you can click a few buttons and say you want to diversify five percent of your portfolio into uh, this cool little button here that says cryptocurrency and you can hit next next finish inside of your normal plan and your Joe Smo working for some company the second that gets unlocked you have this massive amount of capital that can come into the space. And that's the kind of foundational stuff that's getting laid right now and the reason why you're seeing this kind of surge right now in Bitcoin. Now, what happens in that in general? We all know the way finance works. We're going to let this run for a second. I want to see how hot these things get, and then we'll go ahead and play with it. We'll, we'll, we'll continue this topic for a second. We all know how basic finance works. They're going to spread. They're going to hedge and spread, right? So putting all that money in crypto space and just quantifying that is just Bitcoin while I know that's everybody's dream that's in Bitcoin, you know, call it Bitcoin Jesus, Richard, and I love those guys to death, but they're going to diversify on a lot of different asset classes. Because you have Bitcoin as a store of value, that's fine, but you also have those other items out there that have a lot of institutional money into them and trying to improve them, which they're not perfect right now, like Ethereum and a lot of the other the platform-based cryptocurrencies. But bottom line, that infrastructure is what's going to be fueling a lot of that that supply chain drive not just from a financial standpoint right so you, you got the financial asset class store of value transactional stuff bitcoin huge money potential for the world million dollar plus potential right if it started taking on complete asset classes then you got the actual transactional blockchain underlying structures that could replace a lot of the infrastructure stuff that we're talking supply chain smart contract based stuff right it's not going to just land in big business big business is going to be a big part of driving a lot of the innovation because they're helping fuel in that directly versus the traditional route that's been going on with a lot of cryptocurrencies with doing icos where they're trying to get money and they're trying to do stuff to improve whatever roadmap that they have you have a lot of big institutional money trying to you know mature those blockchain techs leveraging ethereum and those kind of things so 
once a lot of those things kind of start to get figured out, and I'm telling you, they're going to get figured out. That's what people are spending a lot of time and effort on, on trying to, to evolve the automation of those smart contracts using the platforms that are out there like Ethereum. Something else may manifest out of it. That is a possibility for sure. But Ethereum, Ubik being a platform that's targeting enterprise platform structures from a public chain standpoint, those all have very promising long-term potential when you start deploying dApps to them that have security fixes and bug fixes and stuff. So you see it with the Ethereum upgrade that's coming out and granted from a miner standpoint, you know, it's a reduction in the actual coin. They're kind of following I, I, what I'd call like the Bitcoin model where they're gonna do a halving, they're gonna have a deflationary piece to it. There is still no end in sight with how much Ethereum will be generated, but you know, those are all things that could change provided the teams put together a plan of what their real model is. Ethereum is a consumption mechanism. You consume it to execute an operation. Bitcoin's a store of value, you just trade it, right? It's deflationary, but there's gonna be 21 million out there that'll just get traded between everybody, right? Ethereum, you lock that Ethereum up and using gas into contracts, right? So it temporarily can take it off a of market. It uses it, it's a consumption model. So it needs to continue to produce, right? So there's, there's a lot of innovation that's gonna come out of it and nobody really knows how it's gonna fully manifest. I mean, this is the internet, it's 1993 and it looks cool. So this kind of activity with mining, I think is gonna go more towards where Richard's kind of idea was with, and we, we've said it for a few times. I mean, before even Richard talked about doing CFD coin, doing the, the fluid dynamic stuff. I mean, a proof of effort is really where this kind of stuff should go. A world supercomputer, stuff that we can use these kind of mining cards that the industry's building architecture for it, where you could actually go out and mine and the exchange is built into the system, that's huge. That's a very big thing where you could, you know, if you're Disney and you're wanting to get a movie pressed off in 30, you know, in two weeks because you already have it kind of laid out in the structures and all that and you want to do some pre-modeling, why not throw it onto the crypto network, buy a little bit of that token and then hedge it across to everybody's GPUs, right? That kind of work package related stuff, you can think SETI, you get a package, you work on it, you submit your results that kind of execution stuff being hedging across all of our GPUs and that built-in finance model already built in is, is a huge potential for somebody to tap. That's why this kind of video and making sure people understand how to use this stuff, that's why we put the effort and time into it. We see the future in it, right? It doesn't look from if you're trying to just get straight and trying to get, if you're trying to make a buck really quick on this kind of stuff, you know, you look at any of the mining in general, it's taken time. You know, people that got that mined Bitcoin, people that mined Litecoin, people that mined Ethereum early on, people that are mining right now, Ubik, right? Those t you look at those timelines where they were real low and there wasn't a lot of profitability in it and you were like, why am I doing this crazy activity? People that mine through that, it's paid off, at least on those last three or four cycles, it's paid off, right? So that's why we continue to do it. That's why we try to educate you guys on, if you're gonna partake in it, even if it's a small one or two of these cards, these cards right now, look. On, I think on Amazon they're like 300 and some change. You can get them, if you do some searching, try to get connected with a wholesaler, you can get them in the mid twos. Right now, the AMD cards in general are coming down, and if you have one card and you're just finding this stream, for the first time you're like, what the hell are you doing? You know, doing one card at a time, get a little crypto in your pocket. You know, you're not gonna mine a ton right with this stuff, but you know, products of scale. You know, a ton right now, one or two Ubi might be only a couple bucks right now. You know, and you don't have time to go out there and get to an exchange and buy some. Well, you can mine yourself a few, right, in a week. So I'm off my, my horse there. Sorry, I went on a big, long tangent, and they're probably like, dude, just talk talk tech. So well, this thing's been running for a little bit. looks like it's stable. Out of the box, it should be. Check well, got quiet. They were all listening. Yep. All right, let's see. Okay, so I think we, we beat that one to death. I think it's it's pretty stable at 134. Now let's take a look and let's just see the overhead. We're going to go straight to 2000. See if they're stable at 2000. That's, a, that's usually kind of the zen on these kind of cards. We're going to drop this a bit to where in reality where we normally would go with it. We're going to leave the power limit alone. 
and we're gonna come back in and do Ubi, and then we'll, we'll do some other coins. I, I wanna do some other coins after we kinda get it optimized, because there's no point to showing you the performance on, on coins not optimized. So we're just at 2,000 memory, and these are stock, bone stock, again, RX 470, mining cards, 4 gig. Okay, so if we go and adjust uh, memory, it looks like so far they're stable. We'll give it a second. It looks like that bumps up to 25.6. We just had a driver failure. It's like Wattman restored settings, even though it didn't. Let's see if it, did it drop them? Uh, we lost GPU 5, so 2,000 is no bueno on that one. Let's try 1980. I'm just going straight to Ubik on that. see what this does here 25 25 so we're still holding around 25 right now but about 150 I mean if it's stable sometimes 2000 gets a little flaky with the cards but 1980 1950 on the memory most of the time works pretty well on these cards well I mean on the regular 470s they did anyways and again we do have some split memory situation going on here but I'm gonna let this run a few more seconds and just see if that 1980 holds. Let's check the power. We did drop the GPU some, so it should drop the power. It went up. Oh, no. It's all over. 850. It actually went up by 50 by taking the memory there. But it is having some weird activity there. I think we may have one GPU that's just acting weird. No, they're all still showing 25. It is dipping though, so but it went up fifty. Could mining only cards be used for rendering later if, for whatever reason, mining ever became unprofitable? Uh, technically, they could, and that's actually a really good. Uh, I've thought about that, and I have not written that down. I'm going to write that down. If you guys would be interested, air, uh, with with the uh, now we have a kind of full time person here. We're trying to figure out some good content that's not just that can expands on the hardware because we have a lot of different hardware you guys see all this hardware i got a couple of vega 64s here we we've, we've been playing around with the the 56 we got the 56 over there we're going to do a video with the 64 to 56 we've been thinking about doing some rendering some uh you know blender stuff some pre pre-done projects uh adobe premiere rendering showing the differences between you know these different cards um there's some cool stuff you can do with like Adobe rendering where you have like proxies and you can have like a little render farm so I could turn this into like a point where I could, you know, do it on one computer, send it over here, have it render out on here, and we could do some testing like that. If that interests you guys as a whole, we'll do that and bring that to you because I, one, I want to know and if I'm already going to do it, I might as well do it in front of you guys too and just kind of figure that part out. But I'm going to write that down. But technically... The NVIDIA mining cards that we have, and we've got some more coins showing up hopefully tomorrow. Let's see a render farm. Writing that down on the whiteboard. So technically the NVIDIA P106 mining cards, they come out of the box with um, TCC mode, which is Tesla CUDA cluster mode. So technically, they're made to be a render farm, uh, not just for GPUs so, or for mining in general. So uh, using AMD's CLI, I mean, there's a, a potential for that. We just haven't done it yet. I mean, I'd like to give that a whirl, but you should be able to use these for other things besides mining because they are technically um, mining cards and render cards. So they do come up as like VGA devices, not just a, uh, you know, there's no IO on this. So... Their daughter cards made to render. All right, so it looks like it's stable at 25 flat. If you just take it to 1980 and 1150, 
A little high on the memory. I'd probably drop the power limit a little. What I'm going to do is shut this off real quick. We're just going to take this down to about 20. Negative 20 there. We're going to take this down to 1060. I just want to do one more test before we start mod modding the BIOS on these. We're going to go right back to HODL. Rob has a super chat question. Yeah, what's up, Rob? Um, is Equihash harder on the GPU versus eCache? Uh, yes, uh, Zcash is a little harder on the GPU just because it's using both CPU and memory uh, and it's going to be using a little more power, but it's not as hard from our testing. It's not as hard as dual mining. Dual mining really taxes your card and anybody that's been dual mining knows the difference. You feel the heat difference on the cards. Also, if, you, if you're using the SATA extenders and not the six pins, there's a good chance that you're probably going to burn up. Uh, those little SATA adapters just because you have a lot more energy coming onto the card you're really maxing out the actual riser um, power you know we've been looking at trying to get maybe one of the uh, the clips that you can put around the wires essentially I forgot what the name of it is we've been we've been researching it right now I know hardware Canucks I think it's hardware Canucks to use it and there's one other good channel that uh, I think uh, gamers Nexus maybe they, they do a lot more on the on the power side um, and essentially put the ring around the, the, the wire to get the actual true, no kidding, power. We've been looking into maybe getting one of those just because I think it's value add to understanding the different modes in mining and what does it do actually. What's the actual draw onto the riser? Because just from using our heat gun, we can, we can tell the difference when dual mining. And it's about a 30 to 40% increase on that riser compared to not, not dual mining. Yes. What kind of strategy would you recommend to a group who has invested 50k in GPU mining and possibly investing 50 more? Would you aim for a fast ROI or would you go all in on coins like Ubik or a mix of both? I would definitely mix. That's what we do. So we mix. So these we have we pulled all none of the rigs right now are doing Ethereum. All of them are off. The difficulties doesn't make sense right now. With a difficulty adjustment, even with the reduction in the coin, um, here I'm gonna shut. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this down real quick. I'm gonna put a couple more cards in. And we'll we'll talk this super chat question. I'm gonna I want to take this to eight. If we're gonna do this, I want to do this to eight cards, um, and that way we can see what a couple other cards we get. Um, what I'm gonna what. What I'd say is you got to hedge across a several just because. So we have all the NVIDIA rigs right now are doing Zcash. Most of the AMD rigs are doing Ubik. And then there's a few other hedge coins that we will we'll look at. I was doing Music Coin for a little bit. I was, had some on Pascal. We've done some Psy. We're trying to, to really hedge across all of them. Because right now, this, this is very indicative. If you look at all the market right now, this is really, really indicative of what, like, uh, January f January through February of this year looked like where everything was kind of sliding not a lot was popping Ethereum was down it was you, you saw some of the news with ripple you know there was ripple was a, a quarter of a cent at the time and everything had this just downward spiral it looked real bad December into January and it's v and you took those charts from December to January and you put them up to right now Bitcoin started to kind of kind of lift everything else started to tank it just is almost doing it the same way right now so you look at the ethereum 17 october 16 october somewhere around there with the 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 fork i don't think there's going to be any contentious forks i mean there, somebody may try to split the chain but i mean i don't think who wants to continue to mine that that's a horrible idea um because all you're going to do is you're going to get through one or two more artificial logarithmic increases in difficulty and then you're never going to find a block so everybody's going to switch over with the with the upgrade and you've reduced the supply input so everything shows that when you've reduced the supply input if the demand stays the same supply demand is going to run the number up right so that's why we're very neutral right now on the speculative nature of the way supply demand works the market dynamics are going to push the price from the miner standpoint we're just going to continue to mine we're going to flip back over to ethereum at that time just to see what that actual output is. It looks like it's about going to be a 60% flip, right? Compared to what it is right now. We'll get some more even with the less coin output. However, the price should adjust. 
That's what it did with Bitcoin. It didn't happen right away. The split in June or July of last year, it was 700 bucks. The next day happened, it was like 740. It, like it dropped some and we were like, oh shoot, what's going on? And then it sat there for like a month stagnant and then it started to trickle up, right? So looking at the split, I think if you go long on the different series of coins, you look at the ones that have development teams, you look at the ones that have roadmaps, you look at the ones that are communicating regularly, that are transparent enough and showing releases and trying to move and progress. You look at, uh, for the longest time, Litecoin did nothing. Charlie quit his day job and focused on it. Focused on the, the indoctrination of what it was gonna try to do. Gave it a purpose. You know, gave it, hey, we want to be a fast transaction alternative to Bitcoin to where you could do intermediary transactions with our Lightning Network to move money and then buy your Bitcoin with it. You know, facilitate a need. You look at Ubik, Ubik's trying to facilitate a need. They're trying to do an enterprise platform. If you build a dApp, you can deploy it to an Ubik and not have to worry about random ICOs just dropping and pulling on the network. That's a big, that's a big notional plan. You know, it's notional. It can change some, but it's a notional plan. They have a path. They're doing updates. You look at some of these other coins that have that same kind of plan. That's the stuff. And those I'm looking at mining, mineable coins, right, guys? This is contextual in mining coins. There are ICOs that have that same kind of vision, but they're not as tangible as something that I, we can go and create, we, people can interact with and, and participate in securing the network. It's a different type of thing. You can speculate on those ones. You know, OMG coin and NEO and all these ones that people ask about, you know, that, you know, I can't mine it. I can speculate against it. I really hope the development team's doing what they're saying they're doing, you know, but people that can interact and you can see the ecosystem and me and you can create coins and we can exchange these coins because we've created them based on our participation on that network. There is a, a, at least the value that I'm putting into it to you. And then if it has that exchange uh, rate because somebody else sees that effort and sees us talking about it and those degrees of separation when you talk to your friends about mining and all that kind of stuff that creates a, a smaller ecosystem that then potentially when big money rolls into the crypto space looking at putting a lot of money into bitcoin which i have no doubt is going to happen that they're going to look on hedging because right everybody's like well that's great i got that crypto but what's this other stuff right and you look at all the coins that have big money in them, short of Ripple, are mineable, right? Almost everything that has big, big money on it is, is at least some some version of mining, you know, coin. Um, short of, you know, there's the some of the ERC-20 tokens that had just huge investments in them and have this, this bloated value because people exchange and only exchange a little bit of the coins because they're going long on them, right? So the liquidity of it is not as what it looks like if people if one person that took a big position and it dropped it would crush the market right so long story short i think that hedging it if you have a larger farm hedge it across several but you know go long on the ones that have the most promise right i mean it's to 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 start dumping all your ethereum and all that i mean i Personally, we're not doing that. We're not obviously your financial advisor, but I just, from our perch, I don't see, I see that there's, you know, there's a lot of people that are going to talk problems about it, but there's a lot of investment, corporate, large investments that want it to work. And there's teams trying to make it better. I mean, there's a release on the 17th of October. They're trying to make some changes to things. They're giving updates to things. Ethereum had some pretty big holes in it. I mean, no message return. You didn't know if something worked or not. I mean, there's a lot of like rudimentary stuff that needs to be fixed in it, um, but it's getting fixed. I mean, that's what these releases are for. So hopefully that was a, an answer. Hedge your coin. Go long. Buy what you can on coins too. Like, you know, people, people ask all the time, like, well, it's too late to get into Bitcoin. No, it isn't. Not at all. And what I would say is, yeah, go get your Coinbase account. I mean, if you're in the States and you can, there's an option in there. So you put money, you put money in a 401k, put money in all this stuff. On Coinbase, you can go in there and you can select, give me $100 a week. Give me $25 a week. You can set it in there weekly, daily, whatever, right? You're paying a fee and that sucks, but that fee is going to be nothing. It's going to be completely pointless 
compared to what Bitcoin could go to, right? So you're making an investment as you hand right now money to Wall Street and your in your 401ks and all that. Take a a a, a 90 10 split right now on the money that you're putting into your 401k. Put 10% in that. What is that? $141 every two weeks. Every two weeks, take you know $14 and put it into Bitcoin. And if that starts showing, you start seeing those little trickles going into your Coinbase account and you're going in there every month and you're hitting refresh and you're like, oh, I had $28 in there because I put two times 14 in one month. But why is it $42? Oh, it's because Bitcoin went up 50%, right? So that's, that's what we're talking about. That's what people are talking about that are investing in it. That's what investors are doing. They're trickling in money. They're not making it go parabolic right away. Just because if people are sitting on the back, they're just going to take that money, drop the price again, have a dip. But if you're buying it consistently over time, it adds up. That 20, 30, 40. Think of it if you were putting 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars in it when it was a dollar. I get that economies of scale, but if Bitcoin goes logarithmic again and goes 20,000, 80,000, 100,000 dollars a coin, that 14 dollars turns into 14,000 dollars, or it turns into 1,600 dollars actually. But I mean, it's it's still fourteen dollars turning into sixteen hundred, eighteen hundred dollars if Bitcoin goes to a half million or quarter million dollars type of stuff, right? But that's what it's about. That's what would have happened then. You could do the same thing with Litecoin. You could do the same thing with Ethereum, right? In I'm just using uh, that as an example because they've created a mechanism to make it easy, to where you can go in there with your account and just add it on a trickle. You know, take take half the half the lunches and just put a little bit in there and go long on it. Another super chat question? Sure. Um, Windows crashing. What are some reasons why that would happen and what can you do to help prevent it if it is happening? Windows crashing. Um, like your, your mining rig is uh, like blue screening and shutting down and restarting. I mean, because that's a very low, because it could crash for all kinds of reasons. You could have too big of an overclock and it's crushing the driver and it's just causing it to hard reboot. You could have. He says no matter what driver he uses, even with two or more cards. I would do a DDU. I would remove everything. And. Oh, that's so far away. I'm going to flip this and this thing's going to freak. You guys are going to get to see. You know what? We're gonna mod these first because if I flip this around, I'm gonna have to do what I'm talking to, telling you to do, which is doing a DDU and having to reset all the cards up because AMD, once you slip, flip, flip a slot, it sh breaks all of them. It doesn't break them, it just, they all have to go reposition themselves. So we're gonna, let's mod them first and then we'll add the more cards. He said yes, so I assume that's the blue screen. So what I would do is I would do a DDU, remove, just remove all the drivers. So device driver uninstall. The video tomorrow will have it very implicitly like stated on how to do all that. Um, let it reboot and then do a fresh driver install on that. If it continues to happen, then there's a good chance that you may have something up with your memory. If you have another memory stick you can put in there, I would try that. Uh, make sure you're... you're uh, you're not overheating in any way with your GPU or your CPU. I mean, there's there's all kinds of reasons what makes a computer a reboot. Make sure you're at 1703 or higher on the the updates. Um, worst case, you could reinstall Windows and then see if that's a fresh a fresh build a fresh install. All right, let's go to this screen. So what we're gonna do first, um, guys, is we're gonna go ahead and let's do let's do an update. I, now I don't I have not tested these BIOSes. I'm just gonna be very straightforward. On it. I have not tested these BIOSes. We're going to see um, what we do with this, but we're going to do it through through PowerShell just because I want to do it quickly. You guys saw what the the outputs of these were. Run as administrator. He said he got hit by a virus, and now it's not. Well, the re restart the uh, rebuild the whole machine. He has. Yeah, I would rebuild the machine um, from a fresh install. I would be very uh, 
the the build that we have tomorrow the video that i'm putting out tomorrow will have access to all of the different tools that we use on a fresh mining card build so we'll have the drivers we'll have polaris editor we'll have a good version of the multi miner we'll have a good version of all the different tools so if you do a fresh build tomorrow and you look at that video you'll have all the tool sets from good sources that we build from source provided to you out there so you can just do that and that way you know you're downloading the good stuff and then make comments below that it's working for you and life is good Let's see ati wind flash and here, I'm going to blow this up because you guys probably can't see crap right now. Um, let's try to do... Keep changes. Let me know if that's big en good enough now. BTC is almost 5,900 right now? What? Oh, Edge sucks. No, it's not. 55, bro. All right, so we are going to mod. I was doing some red dragons with this build earlier. We are gonna do GPU zero. With It's going to the moon. Oh, got it. Uh -huh. <laughs> you're a noob. I know. <laughs> I should have known that. RX Alpita Emmy. All right. So all I did, guys, is when you type in this, this is the command, and you guys will see this in the video tomorrow. We explain exactly. But this is the command. It's running the ATI flash forward slash f space forward slash or shit. I'm saying forward slash. Minus F and then minus P. So what we're saying is flash the card in position zero with this BIOS. And all I did is start to type in RX and I hit tab and it, it auto fills it. So we're gonna push this BIOS and hope that it works. Oh wow, they're all saying it's uh, all the other ex exchanges. So now it's pushing this BIOS in directly. So this is kind of like using the, just direct and straight to the point. So I can quickly go through these. You know, technically I should like do one. Hold all please. I, I didn't even actually take a, I never, uh, actually made a, a, a stock BIOS for this one yet. We'll take the stock BIOS in number two. Number two here, save this stock, RX 470, Alpida, Mining edition. We'll throw that under desktop. Save. That's just for if I dork these up. Cancel. I could have done that in, in, in here, but now let's go through. We're just going up arrow once, and then we're going to go to one. And on uh, GPU three, we'll have to do the Samsung version.
So this just takes a second for each card. One to number two. You can see why I like doing it in this in this fashion, just because I can quickly flash each of the cards. And when you're dealing with like 20 or plus, we have a script for that. I mean, like if we have this in, it's, we put eight cards in, we do a DDU on it, we do a fresh install on all the GPUs, that takes about five to 10 minutes. And then you can just run a script if you already have that in there with all, just a PowerShell script that has all of them all there. And it'll do each card, it'll bang through them all, it'll say it's done with the script, I can shut it down, put more cards in, go right back to it. Now we're gonna skip number three, we're gonna go straight to four because three is for the Samsung and I really don't feel like bricking one of these tonight. And then we're gonna see what we can get these down to. We will try to undervolt them. We're gonna to try to do everything we can to see if these things are worth it. Yes. Is it uploaded yet? It's in a flat file and we have a person coming over tomorrow to work on the actual filter list. You can look at it. It's going to look a lot like, and I'm trying not to outright copy, um, tech power, tech powers kind of like a GPU, I think it's their like no, not flashing. It's their database. So essentially, I'm kind of trying to do this kind of setup right now. So we have, instead of having pages like this, it's going to just require you to put in your search parameters here like this. So we're, we're building a, a, a search chart like this right now. So we have the database of everything, all the cards that we could find. We have like, I don't know, like 325 cards essentially in a flat file database. Um, with all the with not all the bioses we have the ones that we've done so but we have all the cards in there the same kind of setup as this we have manufacturers model version of it we have core memory we have uh, output of power stock usage and then some of the settings that we've and then like five or six other columns that have just the stuff that we've tried if we've tested it so you could filter on the stuff that we've done and then with that, you'll have the information of which BIOS it is. So like if you click on the detail of it, it'll have um, download the stock, download uh, you know straps that have been confirmed by us um, to work. And then what we'll have is the second phase of that deployment of that database on, and it's gonna fall under here, guys. Uh, it's be tripping this what we're talking about here is under this menu and if you go to the bigger screen the menu comes up here but over here you click on database it's going to replace this right here so you'll have the the search piece right up here and then the columns we're trying to make small enough to fit all on there and then you'll have essentially a drill down of the different bioses that you can download uh so that's that's what we've been working on. So we have the list. It's just trying to make it clean for you guys to be able to get to the information. And then this resource list, we have a new version of this that's going to get uploaded that has a whole bunch of different content on here. So, um, all right, is that all that we got to do? Number three with a different. I think it's S. Samsung, there we go. All right, completed. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to give it a quick reboot, restart. I wonder if I can, I'm going to see if I can expand this screen to take up the full screen. Uh, it's already expanded. It's because I'm uh, my stage is set to a higher a higher version. Yeah, I have a background picture on the stage if I'm. All right, let's go into task manager or not task manager. Sorry. Device manager, we should have a whole bunch of code 43s, which we do. That will get that will get got by the pixel patcher. So under the card mod folder that we have, and I'll have these uploaded on tomorrow's video. You run the pixel patcher. That brings this guy up, and really all we're doing is we're doing this bottom part right here. This is doing all these things, but this bottom part's what's going on. If anybody ever wondered what the hell is going on, the bio signature check is the problem. This patches that. It'll come back and say that it's been done. We give that an okay. We give a reboot. And then that should get rid of that code 43 on all these cards. This is part of the reason why I put those i3 7100s in here for you guys' testing, because I like this to happen fast. The 7300 and the 7350K are fast enough on a single core that, I mean, they're just, they get it done. Let's get this checked with device manager and all of them are fixed no more code 43s have you ever used pivot viewer uh no someone says that that's really cool for visual data i mean i use pivot charts in excel <laughs> And I mean, I've used different uh, uh, data modelers. All right, so this looks like it had some, wow, it had the core buried at 600. I hear you. I don't know what these what this BIOS was doing. Let's sell this to GPU-Z. BTX. Uh, the Bitcoin Gold. Bit, he said Bitcore. I don't. Know, I haven't been following all the all the different derivative chain changes. I mean, I, I so Bitcoin Gold and any of the other branches of that that they're going to split off is just more coins for people that hold Bitcoin. Um, let's see here. Let's run. Just out of the box. Let's run. Ubik again. If this looks good. Let's get this here. Let's close this. Now we're working with. GPU draw is way low right now. And the, so is those those numbers. So that, I think that has to do with the GPU clock. 600's a bit low. Thousand fifty. <laughs> And I don't think we're going to get 2016, but let's try it. I'm going right back to Ubik.
what we care about is the GPU draw right here. There we go. Is there a new afterburner that you're not updated to? No, our afterburner is fine. You said there's a 1.9. Oh, I mean, yeah, of course there is. Every time I'm on here, there's a new version, but we don't need it. And there we go, 28.1. Using 80 watts. I mean, it's using about the same amount of watt. It's actually a little, it didn't really decrease power-wise. So, I mean, they're not, they're not like the P106s. Let me go over here. It's actually using about 30 more watts. Went the wrong way, but I'm going to see if we can undervolt it some and get it down. I mean, that's six cards, 885. I mean, that's. Uh... But, I mean, we're at 28 apiece, 66, 166. Right? What are we missing? What's funny is the Samsung, you can see the Alpitas here. 28.1 but the samsung's rolling in at 27.3 so that that whatever that mod is and we'll put these mods up there for you guys um whatever that mod is is not not as a not as good as the the alpita one so i'll have to play around with it i'll put them both out there let's let this run for a second and see if it's stable But pulling some wattage out of this is the next steps. Doing some undervolting, bringing them down some. And that should bring down the, the wattage. You can still see that, that power creeping up as the fans are spinning up to keep the cards cooler. I mean, it's bumping down to one, 190, almost 9. Oh, we broke 900 there for a second. So we'd be right at, I mean, this has got an EVGA Supernova P2 1200 watt power supply on it right now. With eight cards, we'd be really touching that. We'd be right there at about, because you're going to get about 30 to 40 watts per riser. That's 80, so that's 980. And then you got the other 160, so we're, that'd be right at about 1,090 to 1,100 watts without doing any mods on eight of these cards. Sam says that his rig keeps rebooting when he uses Equihash, but it's stable with Ecash when he uses no OC or stock settings. When he's, uh, he's got a message. Um, well, because uh, Zcash is, is, is taxing the GPU, he should try to drop, um, try to drop the GPU some. I'm getting, uh, Twittered by, uh, but Barney Cleese right now. I don't know if he's watching the tube right on here or not. But he's sending me. He's he's tweeting me. Um, I have certain people that have like the the little verified thing. They they actually activate my audio. Um, let's see here. Let's try to bring this up and let's check. Let's check some other coins out. We'll start from the top. Zen coin. Now I don't usually do Zen coin, but we'll give it a, we'll give it a whirl and see what these things are doing. For a month or two, 
Are there any changes to drivers or anything that would make it hash better? Is there any updates that need to be done if it's working fine? Uh, well, I mean, you should have the latest versions of the miners. So go out there and update. Make sure you're running on the latest version of Claymore. Would it change his hash rate? Uh, I mean, I personally would just do it anyways, just from stability standpoint. Um, the differences between 9.7 to 10 were a, a little bit, maybe 0.4 mega hash. People, other people could respond of, of how it was. Um, there was some better compatibility. I mean, anything with any updates. You guys got to look at updates in general. Updates are usually a good thing. Sometimes they're bad because they weren't tested like they should have. But by and large, they're, they're, they're addressing all kinds of things. They're addressing the things that they do the bullet points for, and then they're addressing the other things like probably security issues. Each software release in general have those kind of things. We're going to let, I want to, uh, what's this, Zencash 240, 250? I guess that's okay. I mean, that's pretty average, I think, for an AMD card. Um, we'll, we'll talk SDLC here in a second, and I'll explain why that's a good thing. But, um... Let's get, uh, I don't think I have Litecoin functioning right on this. We'll see. Um, that might take a second. Yeah, any of the software updates, guys, Windows updates, um, I mean, your phone updates. I mean, most of that stuff is like, there's always a punch list, a backlog, some reason why they built an update. Sometimes it's adding more features, sometimes it's fixing features. But then there's a list of things that they usually don't necessarily disclose, which are a whole punch list of other things like security fixes. And in that, they may say, we upgraded a security package, and there's a lot of stuff got fixed. They do that for all kinds of reasons. Part of it's OPSEC, which is like operational security type of stuff, right? Like, they don't want to tell you, oh, we fixed all kinds of zero days that you didn't know about, right? So, but it, it's just part of the process, right? So, anytime you do updates, be it a minor update, be it a software on, um, you know, your Windows or Linux or any of those kind of updates, the kernel updates, most of the time, it's, it's the features, it's the upgrades, it's the fixes to the features. And it's a list of security stuff that nobody's telling you about, right? So I would say the highest versions of most things is probably usually a good time. They're not trying to screw you. I mean, most of the software development is just like people want new shit and you got you do an update for it. Um, unless they're updating the terms to say, oh, by the way, I'm throwing in a fee on this or something like that. Just review it. But most of the time you'll see some kind of community out outcry of like, oh, they're screwing us now. So... I mean, just, I would always go for the highest versions of most of the stuff that you can get just to get those other things that you don't know about. Let's go back to this. Another PSA. So anybody that wanted to know what old script performance on something like this is, here's your script performance. 600 kilohash per card, a little over 600 kilohash per card. On Litecoin, that's 3.5 mega hash. This takes you back to 2003, 2004 time frame. When we were doing awesome R9 290s and 280Xs, um, and that's a pretty decent hash rate. I mean, for for uh, script now, I would not recommend this and do this. If anybody's wanting to know how much power does that use, there's your power usage on script, 913. Not worth it. You won't make any money on that unless there's a script coin that nobody's pointing their script miners to, and you can go and hedge a little on those coins, but. 3.5 mega hash on a six card rig, that's its output. That's why we included that in the multi miner. I'm trying to get the NVIDIA version of that to work and then we'll add it on the next release. Uh, just that way you guys can test out your script pleasures. Um, let's do, I don't think I got the, the dash one working right, but we'll see. Nope. It blew up. I gotta work on the dash one. Signature might need to pull out because I don't think you can mine that anymore. And music coin would be a lot like the Feather coins not working. I need to fix feather coin. Ah, that video. Digibyte. 
41. Hexamar. Hexamar. We'll get to it. Oh, what the fuck? Mute X air unlock. Oh, uh, we're good. That's <laughs> R, it's not X. Unless I pull out something. <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> that's not happening. Um, yeah, then I get tossed off of YouTube. Uh, this one is X, X, EXP. Should be a lot like Ethereum. Maybe a little slower than Ubi because I think their DAG's a little bigger. DAG is 1.2. So it's still 28s on EXP. Ubix, Dibix, Library, 27. This is library credit. Mega hash. A little less power usage here. Eight forty, eight twelve, eight twelve. So a little less power usage on library. Five seventy five mega hash. Not as good as the uh, NVIDIA cards. Do you know anything about HBCC for more than four Vegas? Uh, we don't have more than four Vegas, so I haven't really looked into uh, having to work through, uh, I think it's for XMR, if I'm not mistaken, to get that to work. They could correct me. But we have not, we have, we just have, we've steered away from paying, over paying for Vegas right now. It just doesn't make sense for us. And then if I can get, let's try some Pascal. If I can get uh, AMD or any of the, the providers to send us some examples, we're more than happy to do the, uh, to do the test. But I mean, we have a couple Vega 64s and a Vega 56. We paid like you guys big money for them. Um, you know, we got no breaks on those at all. I mean, we paid close to eight hundred dollars for the seven hundred and some change or something for the sixty four. We paid six hundred dollars for the fifty six, which was way overpriced. But we wanted to bring a video to you guys, so we just there's no reason to take that by another four, at least another two or four cards. Here is which one was this one? Pascal, two point eight giga hash on Pascal on these. Power-wise, again, we are right around those same rates, uh, about 70 less than Ethereum, 830. Or Coin. 23, 31, 39, 46, 46 mega hash, or no, 4,600 4, mega hash, rather, 4.6 giga hash. Looks pretty stable. Power-wise, Sia, if you just do Sia by itself, it is it does use less power. Usually, let's take a look at that. 774. It's probably not profitable. You could do the math on the power usage on 700, 700 watts, 4.6. Somebody could do that on a calculator pretty quick. Are you holding any Sia right now? I am. I am holding a lot of Saya. Yes. We dual mined it for a while on quite a few rigs, so. A 
Let's look at 18. Zcash, Claymore, AMD. You said the length of these cards on Amazon is not working. Uh, you can check. Clicks for me. It's clicking for you? Somebody else try to click it and see if it works. And are you in the States? And we have John Smith. That sounds very state-like. We have a weird range of speeds here. Let's, let's see if they spin up. It takes, it takes, sometimes it takes Zcash a little bit to get its, get its business going. Now this is not using that much power at all, so I don't think it's really taxing. So for just AMD, it's not it's using 750 watts of power with these settings right now. Now we do have this downgraded, so we are we are throttling this some. On the Zcash performance, I'm not doing really a fair test here because I do have if I close that. I need to bring this back up. Let's check. Let's check that that Zcash performance now. switched it sorry guys I moved the uh, I moved the the GPU clock up to oh, they're saying the link works but it's just the price isn't what you're saying oh yeah that price is horrible I'm just linking it to where you can see what kind of card it is the price is disastrous so we're at 1234 uh, on the core now, so giving it more core, and it's going to bring bring up the power quite a bit. You're going to see a big difference now if the pass rate doesn't make sense. So we're almost at 300 here now. So from 220 to 230, let's see if those cards kind of spin up. Take a look at the power difference. 1133, 730. To 1100. That's what we were talking about on Zcash. You starve it of power, it runs like crap. You give it power, we're almost at 300 on these cards. There's a few that are slouching. But you're talking a lot more. Look at that. We're almost hitting that 1200. Now this is a 1200 platinum 1200 GPU. So but still we're only at 1600. Looks like all of them are almost all. It take it takes Zcash a little bit. You got to keep testing it, keep searching, seeing if it gets it up there. We got one slouch here. That GP5 is kind of slouching at 266, but that is Zcash. So 1700. It broke 1700 hashes. It probably ended at about 1725 as the top for that. Go ahead and test the rest of this. Bring this back down. I'm going to bring Afterburner back down. 1050 minus 20% on the power. Lock that. Where's my GPU Z?
I don't know why I closed that. Let's see. I don't know if I have the Monero Connect figured right. We'll see. Here's your Monero hash for the Monero folks. Why do you prefer 44. Windows over Linux when you're doing your videos? Oh, we use Linux. I mean, I look at all of our older videos. Anything that's, when I'm doing six cards, eight cards, and all that, I'll use Windows because I also use the Multiminer and I try to show people how to use the Multiminer on Windows. But we will do a Linux video with these cards. When we do the deep dive on these cards, Right now, this is just a, a, what I call an open ex exploratory video. New cards, fresh build. Let's see what they can do. When we do an actual like deep dive, if you see the video, it says deep dive. We'll do Linux, simple mining OS. We do have Pimp OS now. Uh, we'll do that, and you'll see the Linux on these. But simple mining. Uh, it, are having having quick access to be able to flip through these really quick um, and show you guys different different hash rates I think is more important right now than uh, pick an OS and then we'll we'll do a, a, a different a different style video for that so I don't know if that's real good or bad I don't really mind Monero too much you guys want to see the power usage on that there's your power usage right around 700 watts There you're at 4,500. And then we could try Ethereum. Now this does not have the blockchain driver. If we did have the blockchain driver, we'd be getting around the same as Ubik, using the latest driver on Ethereum. It nests a lot. Here we go. There's there's with uh, even modded. That's what they're getting. One forty four without the blockchain driver. The blockchain driver will put them back up to 28. We gain about four hashes. You see the DAG file at 2.13. You know, as people that freak out about, oh my God, my three gig cards, how long are they gonna last? That is the DAG file size, guys. 2.13. November of 2018 is the best guess right now on the, on the size of the growth of the DAG file. That's also been altered because the block times and all that have changed because the Ethereum team went ahead and let the block times increase because of the logarithmic increase of the difficulty due to ice age. So it's broke all the original models because that stuff is because the block times are off. Stuff wasn't coming out every 15 seconds. It was coming out almost twice that. So or twice as long. So uh, really we need a new model to figure out when the three gigs gonna occur, and it's probably not sometime in now well into 2019, as best guess, when it'll break three gig. And that's if they ever go to proof of stake. Um, you're 20. You're not talking until 2021 until your four gig cards don't work on Ethereum. So you've got some time. So that's Ethereum. Let's do some Ubik and dual mining, and then we'll kind of wrap this one up. How long has this been going? An hour and a half. I, I wanted to try to keep it no more than an hour and a half. So we got to most of the content that I wanted to talk through. Um, we're going to do some Ubik dual mining real quick. Since we don't have a blockchain driver on here, you can just imagine it, what it would do with uh, Ethereum. And this, let's do some Decred. How long can you mine Ethereum? 
you can mine Ethereum right now until they decide to go to proof of stake. And right now their best guess schedule on that is until the end of 2019, if not 20 into 20, the, the, towards the end of 2019 right now, because we got all 2018. They moved it. They moved the notional schedule 18 months. So at least another 18 months after the next hard fork, which is the 16th. So there's your decred performance. Is it still a good idea to buy three gig cards because they're cheaper? Um, yeah, I would go three gig cards all day long. On the, on the uh, as long as you're the problem with the three gig cards on like the 1060s is you have a good chance of getting bad three gig cards with the wrong memory, um, and you'll be stuck at about 19 mega hash. Um, so it's it's you're playing some serious silicon lottery with that. Um, I would say there's a lot of people that are exiting the space right now on the mining because it's not as profitable. It happens every time the mining goes down a little bit. I would say look at some aftermarket GPUs. The markets are being flooded right now. You're helping somebody that wants to get out and you know, you're probably going to get some level of a deal. Um, I'd say don't beat them up too much. I mean, you're, you, no matter what you buy, you're probably going to get a better deal than buying full retail right now, unless they bought at the peak of the pricing and now retail prices have came down quite a bit. So they're going to fill that, they're going to fill that pit right now as the retail prices have started to come down. I've started seeing some uh, RX 570s in that low, low to mid 250 ranges now. Um, so the prices are about where they were at at the late May um, out there. So some decred to performance power wise on the dual mining. 920 or almost at a thousand on the dual mine. You gain about a hundred hundred watts there on the dual mine. Who began? Susan Ubik and Saya. These are four gig cards. People are wondering, like, wow, why is the four gig card, or why is the the performance kind of sucking? These are eight gig cards. They do a little better. The eight gig cards seem to do a lot better on the on, and it's a toss up because I've had a few four gig cards that have done spectacular on dual mining, but some are just better than others when it comes to four gig cards. Eight gig cards, by and large, are very consistent of doing pretty decent dual mining, from our experience. Looks like we're at 21 and 2700 and we're at same roughly same power usage maybe 30 less using Saya. so we'll take some questions um you want to put your customary ant miner psa out there someone asked my ant miner what's wrong with the ant miner no, then it's like any other any other ASIC out there. I mean, I got where's that one ASIC I always use as an example. I got some bigger ones. I got to figure out where they're at. I I got a larger. I think I got an insulin miner or a inosilin. I got a few old ASICs that are still on a on a on a shelf. <clears throat> Maybe we'll do a random. If you guys want something like this, I have some of these old Bitcoin miners. I will give these away. If people are actually interested in this, keep one. this is an I have, I have a, like a box of these somewhere. These are 50 giga hash rock miners. Um, they're 50 giga hash Bitcoin. And essentially you just plug in a USB right into that. You give it some little, there's a little supplemental power thing you, I have that plugs it plugs into, you can plug it into any PSU or whatever. But I, I, I think I have a box of these somewhere. We'll find some of these. If you guys want these, we'll do a giveaway on them. They're free. Um, Provided they're in the states, I'll pick up the shipping. If it's if we ship somewhere else, distance-wise, I probably will have to do something on the shipping because this stuff. I mean, it, it's not it, it's worth it's not worth the shipping is what it comes down to. But um, 
maybe if we'll do we have some a lot of different bitcoin shirts right now on the on the site maybe we'll do a giveaway with that no remember go back and explain why ant miners might not be your best investment well i mean you're gonna get <clears throat> with all the asics provided when you can get it when you give when you exchange your money for an asic depending on how quick you can get it and put it in there and start mining you're on this deflationary amount that you're going to end up getting because of difficulty as you're as you're mining difficulty is usually going up because more and more hardware is coming out more and more people are mining it especially if the price starts to go up so your your amounts that you're getting like all mining it's going to be decreasing so that this piece of equipment ends up getting to this point where it sits on my it's a you know just this cool little thing off to the side and i will not plug that in because it's not worth the power because 50 giga hash is going to get me nothing on bitcoin 50 giga hash is like a minuscule uh, it's like a waste of power um so it just sits there this is this is the proverbial ant miner type of scenario you're going to pay money you're going to get some out of this this rock miner by itself this 50 giga hash when we had this was in 2014 maybe i think it was 2014 2015 2015 it might have been 2015 it's when these first came out is when we got this well, this thing mined roughly 0.8 of a bitcoin totally worth it now right because this thing cost maybe 129 dollars at the time 0.8 of a bitcoin this thing paid for itself and then then some right so in that concept that you go buy that ant miner if you understand that that's what it is and that's generated now in that same time let me put pull this over here as an example i keep some of these as relics this was this had a water cooler on it i pulled it off still works r9 290x this mined the entire time that it was out litecoin and dogecoin for like maybe nine months i probably on each one of these probably earned maybe 13 to 18 litecoin um per card we had six of them in there so probably a couple hundred litecoin each card i can turn around put the water cooler back on this and still sell this and mind you i probably bought this for two or three right at probably 309 i think is what this costs 309 289 something like around there is what i paid for this i could turn around put the water cooler back on it that i paid maybe 50 dollars for 60 dollars for put it back on there and still sell this for pretty decent money I got all of this, I would give away because I can't sell this. There's no point to sell this. I would be screwing you if I sold this. This I'm not because you can put this in something and this thing will still play video games and do all kinds of cool stuff. That's why people hedge on this kind of stuff. And at the time, it didn't seem like it was Litecoin was $3 a coin. We turned this off. We went on to other things. We waited a year and a half and then Litecoin blew to $50, $60, right? So that's the kind of situation is ubik and saya and all these other coins as long as they're good development teams and they're they're progressing the technology and they they're they're trying to earn their keep on a platform and when people believe in that and they invest in that and they need it as a consumption mechanism such as ubik is a consumption mechanism just like ethereum is then there'll be a reason for it and a need for it because somebody needs to deploy an app to it. So that's the path. As long as they stay on that path and they don't dork it up, then we believe in that. That's why we mine it. Uh, Richard gets out with his, CLD, uh, his CFD coin um, and is able to do packaged fluid dynamics stuff across, you know, render farms. We'll believe in that and we'll provide hardware for an exchange for token on that, right? um that's what this is for so if you're investing money you can get in that but the risk is a lot higher because this if everything goes south you can sell all of this hardware these mining cards is a good example of where, where that's really challenging that model because these mining cards are not like this card i could put this in and game with it this one i can't well, at least i don't think i can that might be a good test to see if i could mine on this or play video games on it i don't think i could because it it's going to look at this as the primary display adapter or need it for the primary display adapter. But it is a good test to see, and maybe we'll have to do this with the NVIDIA cards. I don't know if you want to write this down. But I'd like to try the P106 of NVIDIA card and try it as like the physics engine side of something. So we could probably put a primary display adapter in there and then have in 
the NVIDIA driver set the, the mining card to a physics adapter only and then see if there's a performance and gaming difference. You know, have a single card in that. Maybe you could use these as a, a hedge like that, but that's kind of a stretch. This thing, no matter what, was only made to do SHA-256, right? So you could repoint this to other SHA-256s, but that's all it is. It's just, a, it's a, it's a, it just looks cool. I mean, it's a miner. And I have a bigger box version that looks like this back in our storage that's just, I mean, I thought about turning it on when Bitcoin Cash first came out, maybe pointing it to that. The next fork, maybe the next 256 coin, SHA 256 we can point it to, but other than that, it just sits on a shelf because those things use a lot of power. I mean, they use 1600 watt power supplies. I mean, that in the cylinder box that I have has two of them in it. Two 1600 watts power supplies, it's 3000 watts of power. I mean, what, look what you can get with 3000 watts of power these days. You can get three of these rigs all day long on that much power. Any other questions? Oh, here's an old one. This was an old, this is the old version of a Bitcoin miner. This was a, a graphics card that still can be used, a 6970. 6970s and 50, 50, uh, 5970s is what we used to mine Bitcoin back in 2010. 2010, 2011, these, we keep this relic around just for that reason, that this thing was responsible for mining quite a bit of Bitcoin back then. And just got it for just kind of those reasons, just to say, hey, you know, the old 6970 mine used to be able to mine almost full blocks by itself back in 2010. That's 50 coins. They got any questions? Jed challenges you to a game on the ant miner. A game on the ant miner? To see which one pulls more money? No, to see if you can actually get a game to run off of it. Off the, the, what, this? Yeah. This is the ant miner. This is a rock miner. You can't get a rant, but I could try to get a game to run on a mining card. You can't get a game on this. This thing is an ASIC. It is designed specifically for the task of processing SHA-256 hashes. That's it. It's, it's a special chip that's just coded to do that. That's what an ASIC essentially is. You could have ASICs for everything. Now you can get programmable versions of these and that's what happened back before these came out, which was FPGAs, which you you can, you can take, it's kind of like a GPU that you can code to do a specific task. And you can write, you can write a ROM for it. And then FPGA was the first kind of phase that phased out these old guys, the 6970 didn't have a very long lifespan before FPGAs started taking over that business. And you had some old uh, old companies, Butterfly Labs is one of them. Um, Butterfly Labs had a device like this, it was called a jalapeno, and it was five giga hash. This was 50 giga hash, so that jalapeno. We posted a picture on our Twitter a while back of the, the jalapeno doing, I think it was over, we could overclock it to eight giga hash from five giga hash. And we were generating about 0 0.02 Bitcoin a night. And I think it was June of 12, 2012, 2012. Yeah, I think it was June of 2012, maybe 2013, 2013, it was 2012, whenever the jalapenos came out, but it was 0 0.2 Bitcoin a night as how much it would generate, which was quite a bit. Uh, then, perspective, in perspective, because that device was only $300. So we figured that, you know, okay, it'll pay for itself. And it, that one device lasted for about two years. It was not profitable after about seven months, but we just left it kept going and it became profitable. Because something, profitability like this right now, sometimes mining at a loss at current price still nets you coins at current price. But if those coins turn into a higher price at a later time, you're looking at a, that that was a fruitful effort. So you're mining for the future. That's essentially what it is. Right now when we're mining Nubik and you're not making a ton, you're making two, $300 maybe at most on a rig a month on Nubik because it's only $1.25 right now. The Nubik goes to nine, ten dollars Those 40, 80 coins a week that you were mining, it paid off. 
What do they got? You're getting, you're getting uh, that look. Did you ever do a video on those rock miners? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, it was this one. If they go back to like 2013, 2014 videos that we have, like way old videos. I mean, we've been around since we started doing videos in December of 2013. Um, and we did ASIC videos towards May of 2014. So if you, if you look at May, after May of 2014 is really when the ASICs really started kicking up. Um, that's when, um, we started doing stuff on the different ASICs in general. Any other questions? We'll wrap it up. Don't forget to go out to bitsbetripping.com, guys. We got some shirts out there. We're cleaning up some of the shop stuff. A lot of that stuff just points you back to Amazon in general, back to our affiliates and stuff links. But um, we do have the shirts out there. We got some back in stock. We've made a lot of shipments. I still have a few outstanding shipments. I had a shipment come in and the shirts weren't right. So those are uh, the fixed ones are getting here tomorrow. So if you haven't got our uh, shirt order, we have a few people that are outstanding. Um, you're going to get them. The, the rest of the order is coming in tomorrow. And then we'll have some stuff out there because a lot of people have been asking about the shirts and stuff. Uh, I think this is the one that we're, we're getting some more on um, right now. But we had a, a whole bunch come out. Uh, are getting sold out like really quick. So we ordered some more. You guys have been awesome about that. Um, again, like, subscribe, share. You know, make some comments, make some suggestions on Discord. Go on to Discord, ask some suggestions of what videos and stuff you want to see, and we'll try to get those made for you. Um, all right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Drop in Discord and say hey. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll have another live stream this weekend. Oh, what happened to the 19 card motherboard? Right before I shut it down. It's here. The the NVIDIA GPUs will be here tomorrow. Watch Twitter. We'll, uh, the, when the bottom line, you need six P or at least eight P106s. Don't ask me why. We tried these, it doesn't work. We'll, we'll talk that through the next video. We have the P106 here. We have the rigging here. Here's 13 cards, uh, risers, and we have the other six off to the side. We're going to do another live stream build when the P106s arrive tomorrow. You guys hang out. Thanks for your efforts. And uh, did we just get a crazy super chat at the end? It was our favorite, Richard Porter. Richard Porter dropping the hundo spot at the end like, like a boss. All right, buddy. We'll have that other video uh, this weekend.